Hi, and welcome back to Life in Media. I'm Sophia Sefu, and today we're going to talk a little bit about how guys can look good on camera. Uh, last week we talked about the ladies, so today it's the guys' turn. Uh, so again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start from the top of our head to the tips of our toes, and we're going to talk a little bit about some techniques that you can use to help you kind of get over any nervous butterflies that you might have. So here we go. Um, just start uh, on the top of your head. Stay away for, from caps or any type of hat that you might want to wear. I know it might be really tempting, but we cannot see your face when you're talking. Uh, so let's just, uh, you know, have that stick to the Super Bowl winners, and hopefully they're not going to do any interviews with their hats, but if they do, then, you know, so be it. But it's probably not best for the rest of us to be doing those types of things. Uh, so moving a little bit further down, speaking about your face, uh, you're going to want to, uh, I know this is probably not something that you're going to want, guys, but you do have to wear makeup just like the ladies. At least a little bit of concealer under your eyes and maybe around uh, any sort of red areas on your face uh, as far as your lips are concerned. Uh, at least a little bit of chapstick just to, you know, keep them moist. You don't have to look all glossy or anything of that sort, but just keep in mind that you probably will need uh Again, if you can, do the same things, you know, moisturize and um, drink lots of water before your interview, but make sure that you are wearing uh, at least a little bit of foundation uh, just to get a little bit of a base, uh, but even just concealer if you really insist. Um, and if you can, some powder. Uh, I know that there are some people who are really nervous and tend to sweat profusely when they're in interview situations, and you want to really avoid that. Uh, so, uh, just make sure that you have uh, some powder on your face if you need it. Uh, so, moving a little bit further down, uh, I know that last week I talked to the ladies not about wearing, uh, about not wearing black and white, but for the guys, as long as you've got some kind of contrast, um, that should be okay. So, I mean, if you can see right here, having something that's a solid white is a really bad idea, or having something that is just completely black is not a good idea either. But something that's just a little bit of a contrast should be just fine. If you can, uh, you know, look at things like a gray or a navy blue or anything of that sort, that's a better way to go. Um, as far as your ties are concerned, a solid color like a burgundy or a blue or a green or anything of that sort is a good idea. Something that is like a textured sort of tie that's got all kinds of weird patterns is not a good idea. It's going to show up really weird on camera and you don't want to do that and you don't want to distract away from what you're saying by the fact that your tie is just really awkward and weird. Um, so yeah, now as far as your pants are concerned, um, you know, just having nicely pressed pants, if you can, in a gray or a khaki or uh, something that's away from a black, definitely not a white. You're going to you know, you don't want to start doing sort of, you know, boating kind of things, but uh, just uh, keep in mind, just keep them neat and tidy and, and the whole bit. Uh, with your shoes, uh, just keep them to a minimum, like a brown or a black. Uh, don't shine them up too much, just because you don't want the light reflecting off of the tips of your toes. Uh, also, uh, just, you know, make sure they're not that sort of hard, um, uh, the, the hard, flat, uh, sole, you're going to want to go with something like a rubber sole if you're going to be walking around. It makes the least amount of noise. So that's that for boys on the tops of your head to the tips of your toes. Now as far as some techniques to help you out, I have seen guys that have done some push-ups, maybe about four or five push-ups before they go on camera. That seems to work really well for them, so that's something that you may want to consider. Also, uh, if you want to just do a little bit of stretching. I know that you might be doing interviews where you're like me and you're just sitting down, but you just want to make sure that you're, you know, loose and, and ready to go because interviews can take some, can tend to make you a little bit tense. Um, and that's the other thing that you want to talk about. If if you stumble or if you make a mistake or something happens, just keep going. No one's really going to notice that much, and you're probably better off not making it a big deal in your own head. Just keep on sailing through, and you know, whatever happens, happens. Uh, also, if you want to consider just loosening up your, your mouth, that was a good idea. Um, before you put on some makeup, you just might want to massage your muscles right in here in, in between sort of um, the, your, your jaw bone as well as your, uh, your jaw line. Right in there, you're going to want to just massage that place right in there. Uh, and if you want to do like a red leather, yellow leather, red leather, if you want to do those sort of vocal warm-ups, those always tend to help. When you're uh, when you're going on camera, and again, remember to breathe. 
as much as you possibly can, uh, and that is going to be, and you will be just fine. That I promise. So until next week when we're going to be talking with a lovely director, Nicola Cole, who will tell us a little bit more about some technical aspects of how to look good on camera, I will bid you adieu, and until we see each other next week, take care and bye-bye.